How are you today? Art Jeremiah here, and welcome back to another Building a Dungeon video. In today's video, we're building a room for the characters to get some much needed rest in. So we're starting this build out with this circle of spare styrofoam that I had sitting around. This circle is going to be the well for the characters to draw some fresh water from. And for the inside of the well, I'm using a quarter as a template to trace a circle. And then I just use my hobby knife to cut out that circle. And then after I get the basic shape that I'm looking for, I take some thin spare styrofoam that I have sitting around and cut out some stonework for the well. And these are just small shapes that I'm tearing and cutting the edges and just rounding them out slightly. Not too much because I still want them to look like stone. And I bend them in shape and glue them to the circle. And then I make some angled stone shapes for the top of the well. So we're just going to have three layers of rock for the well. Recently I replaced my piece of road asphalt with this homemade texture roller. And it's just milliput attached to an old paint handle and then adorned with pieces of aquarium gravel and sand. I wasn't too happy with the deep crevices of the stonework. So I take some filler and I just work the, work the filler in with my fingers around all the brickwork as if it were grout. And then I do the same with the inside of the well just to smooth out that inner part of the well. Okay, now I'm using these sprues of resin stone from Spellcrow to make little, what are they? I don't know what they're even called. Little stacks of stones. I don't know, it's just something I remember seeing as a child. I'd go up to the canyon and we'd be camping and I'd hike up in the hill and people would have like stacks of stones. It was all limestone, so it was kind of like this and people would stack it up and it looked kind of cool. I thought it was like, at the time, I thought it was like some sort of like devil worshippers or some something like that. So I wanted to put this in the room just to throw the characters off a little bit. Maybe whoever was venturing here before decided to take a rest here and they were just playing around with some stones that were around in the room. So I just stacked those up with some super glue, set them aside to dry. And then I attach all these pieces to a spare piece of styrofoam. The resin bits I'm attaching with some blue tack, that didn't quite work for the well. So I used half pieces of toothpicks and attached it to the underside of the well and then attached that to the spare piece of styrofoam. And this is so we're just able to handle it a little bit easier when we're painting things. And then we just paint all the assembled pieces with a coat of black paint mixed with wood glue. These roots have been harvested by me. These are just random weeds out of my garden and I dried them in the oven. And I just used a really low temperature in the oven and dried them out for maybe a half hour. They almost ended up too brittle. So I put these in a spare little container with some PVA glue and water and paint and I just mix them around. They break up a little bit because they were so brittle, but in the end, the PVA glue is gonna strengthen them a lot and soak into the roots because, you know, it's like wood almost. And set them aside to dry. Okay, then I decided that we needed a pail for the adventurers to use to get some water. So I'm gonna hand sculpt this with some terracotta milliput. And it doesn't really matter what color of milliput you use. And I just put a sewing needle in my pin vise and use that to sculpt the small details like the wood grain and whatnot. And I start off just by sculpting out the wood and then I add the metal bars, and that's what we got. And then while it's still wet, I take a piece of paper clip, and bend it into shape, cut it to length, and then use that as the handle of the pail. Okay, now I want an old rope. Everybody who's played Dragon Quest knows that you always check the wells. You always go down the wells to see what's down there. And we don't know yet if there's gonna be something down there, but I want the possibility so this rope can be used both for the characters to draw some water from the well or to try to climb down the well. And maybe it breaks, maybe it doesn't. If you guys wanna say of what's down in the well, let me know in the comments below. Whatever people say in the comments below, I'm gonna do a poll for it later and we're gonna make what's inside the well. Whether that's just fresh water or beautiful spring underneath the well, some sort of creature or something dead or treasure or anything. Just let me know in the comments what you think it is. Get creative, 
and I'll put a pull up on the community tab. And I just wind up this piece of twine, glue it together with some hot glue, coil it up, paint it like I did the roots, and leave it to dry. So at this point, the roots are pretty much dry. So I go ahead and just dry brush a light highlight on all those. I don't want to do too much detail. Same with the rope, just a light dry brush. And then we're going to be painting the whale. I painted a variety of grays and tans and khakis and even one stone a light pink. And then I do a dry brush of antique white and then a wash of black just so it matches the room a little bit more. And then we paint the pail. And this is a few hours later. It takes a few hours for the milliput to dry enough to paint it. I mean, you can paint it before it's dry. Just be careful because you might end up with brush strokes in the milliput. I paint it basic brown and basic metallic. I'm really light with the metallic because I want it to look tarnished and rusty. Then we glue the well in place. Oh wait, no we don't. We don't glue the well in place yet. We cut a hole for the well so that people will be curious what's down there. Paint it black. Then we glue the well in place. And then we add the barrel, the rope, and the rocks, and the roots, all just with PVA glue. Okay, now we're gonna craft the 10 foot pole. Recently, I asked you guys if you'd heard of a 10 foot pole. About half of you guys have heard of a 10 foot pole. It's almost a meme at this point, or is it a meme? I'm not too sure. I think there's even a band named 10 foot pole now. A 10 foot pole, in case you didn't know, is the most useful thing in older editions of Dungeons and Dragons. It allowed people to walk across the chasm easy, or to use it as a spare weapon, or to prod around for traps. But a lot of older D&D was more about dungeon crawling and problem solving. This is the kind of dungeon I made, so I figured a 10 foot pole would be useful for this room. A little reward for the adventurers who these days keep forgetting their 10 foot pole. I decided I wanted to have a little bit more detail in the pole, so I carve it up with my hobby knife a bit. So then I paint it with watered down brown paint, and that's just going to soak in the cracks, start bringing out the details. After that, I do a light dry brush to bring out more of the edges of where I carved the wood, and we got ourselves a 10 foot pole. Now, for some glamour shots. Okay, cool. So, in case you didn't notice, different background. I wanted to try this whole green screen thing. Hopefully that's okay with everyone. It's a little growth thing for me. I wanted a little bit more color in my life, a little bit more background in my life, not just a black void. So, yeah, that's why that. I suck at it right now. If you got any other ideas, let me know. Don't forget to like the video and comment on what the characters will find if they go down inside the well.